Hey, 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 y'all. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Zillion Podcast, where we talk about fantasy, family, and freedom. And today, I want to talk to you about a game franchise that I love story-wise, and that is Tekken. Okay, now, for those of you who don't know Tekken, that's fine. In fact, this video probably works better for anybody who's not, um, you know, well in depth with Tekken. Um, if you're in the weeds of Tekken, this might not be this the, the kind of video for you. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section below. Are you somebody who's very familiar? Somebody who's not familiar? Somebody who is, you know, just, you know, dabbles a little bit. Um, anyways, what's your favorite Tekken, by the way? Uh, mine is three. I've always been a big three Tekken three fan. Uh, Tekken four is a, is a close second. And then I think Tekken tag one and two, I like. I think that it goes in that order, yeah. And then everything else kind of, it, it's okay. You know, uh, Tekken 5 was fine. It was okay. Uh, I didn't really dig 6 and 7 that much. Uh, I think it had problems. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm going to reserve judgment on, on 8. I played 1 and 2 well, when I was young, but I have like a very hazy memory of it. I'm sure it will not hold up at all. That's why I haven't touched it since then. Um, <laughs> I'm sure the controls ain't good, but it looks fun to play. It does look fun. Um, anyways, in case you couldn't tell from context clues, Tekken is a fighting game franchise that started on the PS1 and uh, has been continuing ever since today. I think Tekken 8 is coming out soon, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it's already out yet, but it, I could be wrong. I haven't been keeping track of it. But the thing that I enjoy about Tekken more than anything else right because i don't play it that often it's very rare that i actually play tekken but listen the world of tekken is fascinating to me and it's a great way to learn how to build your own universe specifically if you're working on something that's got a mix of all sorts of stuff right because i call it a hybrid universe there's other hybrid universes out there uh, Marvel is a great is a great example. Marvel Cinematic Universe specifically is a great example. The DC Animated Universe is another great example, right? These are universes that blend sci-fi, fantasy, space fantasy, urban fantasy, right? Supernatural stuff, right? You know, horror, you know, oriental stuff, lots of different things across the sun are in there but it blends so well that's the, that's the important part that's the very delicate art right it's a very delicate art form to blend things and i'm telling you it's a lot easier said than done because a lot of people will underplay it and be like oh it's no big deal and then they write their own story and you read it and you're like dang this did not cook you know this was not hitting this was not good it needs work like it needs work it's too abrupt right and so the thing is about Tekken that I found fascinating, right, is it has its own flavor. Every other franchise has its own flavor. Any hybrid universe that's good has its own flavor. You can feel the mood and the vibe. Marvel Cinematic Universe has a more jovial kind of fun vibe. Sometimes it can be scary, kind of you know, serious, high stakes. But at the end of the day, you kind of already know that things are going to be generally okay, right? You kind of have a you kind of have a feeling. It's a good time. You go in, it perfectly fits the medium. You go in, you enjoy it, you walk away. You know, Tekken's a lot more edgy. You go in, you don't know how things are going to go. It could work out, it could not work out. Usually it doesn't work out and things go get go from bad to worse, right? So it has its own flavor. And then you have the DC animated universe which is kind of weird because it's able to do both. It's able to do the things could work out or it could go horribly wrong, but at the end of the day, you're gonna enjoy this. You're gonna enjoy the story. You're gonna enjoy the ending. Even if the thing didn't work out, it's gonna have a, a melancholy kind of ending that you find fitting of the story, right? Whereas Tekken is more of a, I'm leaving you at a cliffhanger, right? Tekken is excellent at the cliffhangers. You wanna know what happens next. You want to know what happens next. That's why the franchise has been continuing. I mean, the main hero that they finally, you know, created was in Tekken 3, right? Jin Kazama. He was not your 
um, he was not your standard villain protagonist that we had in Heihachi and Jin uh, Mishima. Uh, Jin Mishima. <laughs> That's a Freudian slip. That's a Freudian slip for me. See if you're if you're if you're in the weeds of Tekken, you're gonna enjoy that one. Uh, uh, Kazuya Mishima, who's his, who's Jin's father, who's Jin's uh, actual father, right? Um, and so those two main villains, right, who were protagonists in the first two games, you know, they 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 were the main villains for the rest of the series, right? They were the main villains. Um, whereas Jin Kazama, who started out as a hero, slowly over the course of Tekken started becoming a villain right into the uh, to the point where he started uh, a genocidal war they basically are calling it world war three right but he was doing it you know with a good quote-unquote good purpose in mind right he was trying to uh st he's trying to uh <laughs> he's trying to defeat another villain an even higher villain right and even more uh more an even more dangerous villain with higher stakes it's it's very convoluted but again like the thing about Tekken is it's its own flavor, going back to my main point, right? A lot of the storylines use all these different types of, uh, you know, genres to make the story work. You know, the horror side of things is, you know, uh, Jin and uh, his father and his grandfather, Heihachi, they all do unspeakable acts, right? They're horrible people. They do bad things, right? And inside of Jin and his own father Kazuya they both have a quote-unquote devil gene which turns them into monstrosities right these abominations these devil-like creatures who do even worse things right and so that you have that Lovecraftian biblical horror that is involved with sci-fi because you have now the genetics of these guys and figuring out you know what makes the devil gene uh you know uh turn people into like demons right and then you have the sci-fi side of other characters who are robots who fight in the tournament and then you have other people who are uh from a land of mysticism um like one character who put <laughs> who put this who has the manifestation of the big bad boss guy Jin's trying to fight inside of her it's just there's so many things in Tekken that's just such a weird, interesting uh, twist to it, right? That makes it unique. And so it uses all these avenues, right? To make it a universe that you don't really find anywhere else. I think that's fascinating. And it does it with no, um, it does it without being irreverent, right? It actually does it seriously. Even though there's a lot of jokes and a lot of fun times to be had and a lot of, you know, poking fun of its own self, it also takes itself seriously. It's able to do both. And I think that there's a lesson in that, right? Being able to do both is having the skill to know when it's time to be serious and when it's time to be funny, which I, unfortunately MCU can't do it right now. Like the, the old MCU was good at that, right? But they are not good at it anymore. They're just, the writers don't have that skill. The current writers don't have that skill. Whereas the old writers did. And I think there's a lesson in that in that Tekken knows when it's time to make a fun joke and then when it's time to, you know, get on with the story and actually take itself seriously and, and, and uh, deliver on the promise of, hey, this is actually a serious story about, you know, the world ending because these guys are <laughs> in a corporate struggle over this gigantic organization that has been handed down from family member to family member from father to son and i just find that interesting infinitely interesting so many possibilities to tell to take this story um i'm very interested to see where, where they go next uh anyways let me know what you think have a great day bye